Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This week's reading vlog is such an exciting one because it is to read a new release that is releasing literally tomorrow and that is A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber which is the third book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I wanted to reread the first two books in the trilogy before I read the last book and I wanted to read it with you guys. I read Once Upon a Broken Heart last year and then I read the second book, The Ballad of Never After, earlier this year but I just kind of wanted to reread them so I can read them like back to back because it's not often I get that experience when it comes to series so I thought it would be something fun to do and I'm kind of running out of time to do this reread. So the book comes out tomorrow. I pre-ordered it, so it's probably gonna arrive on Wednesday. Today is Monday, because usually that's just the way it is with pre-orders. They don't come, they ship the day that it's released. I could literally just go to the store and pick it up, but it's okay. I'm giving myself an extra day because I'm still not done reading the other two books. If you've never read this trilogy, um, it is, kind of a part of the Caraval series, but not really. It's just a part of the same world. And the main character, her name is Evangeline, and she is a lover of fairy tales, romance, and she basically makes a deal with the fate of hearts or fate of love, Jax, and it may have not been the greatest idea, or maybe it was the greatest idea who knows i don't want to give much away because honestly the less you know when you go into the series i find the better because it's such a magical world and it's not hard to follow along so that's my little synopsis for you i will probably do spoiler free for the most part and then any spoilers i will let you know when i am about to talk about them so it's the best of both worlds i am quickly popping on here because it is the next day so I guess I'll do a little quick reading update. Finished book one, absolutely adored it. Loved it even more the second time. And I started book two, which is, this is so beautiful even without the dust jacket. As I said yesterday, I think the book was supposed to arrive today and it has. So let's open it together, do a first impression. Let's see without the dust jacket. Oh my god. This beautiful. Wow. Oh my god, the map on the inside. I'm so excited. I need to finish book two so I can start book three. Wow gorgeous perfection all around <laughs> it's an exciting day i've been working this morning and then i get a little notification on my phone saying your package has been delivered and i'm like i know what this is and this better be what i think it is and so I think it is I'm pretty sure, especially based on the thickness of this package, that it's Iron Flame. So this vlog is turning into an anticipated reads vlog because uh, it's been taking me a lot longer to finish A Curse for True Love. Just because I've been so busy, not that it's bad, it's just busy. And I am so upset that I'm not finished this yet because Iron Flame came out today. But if all goes according to plan, I'm going to finish A Curse for True Love today and start Iron Flame tomorrow. But I wanted to open this with you all so I can stare at it. So let's just take a look here. I'm so pumped. And it's supposed to be the sprayed <laughs> these sprayed edges. So let's see it is oh my gosh wow this is huge it 
It's a little like, um, oh, beautiful. Big map. All the pages. Ugh. The black edges are kind of. I need to like dust this a little. I'm so pumped. Try not to look at any spoilers. Oh, so it's all in her POV? It's all in Violet's POV. But, okay, I'm so pumped. This book is hum. Oh, I didn't even realize the back has a map as well. This book has 623 pages. So, lots. Oh, and it's a little. Oh, no. I think with the sprayed edges, if you can see here, I don't want to touch them because they're going to fade. But, yeah. So exciting. So pumped for this book. So that is my little unboxing here. We got to unbox all of these together. And for a Christopher True Love, I'm over, I think I'm at page 150. So far it's okay. It's, I wouldn't say it's boring, but it's very low drama. Not anything crazy going on. I don't know if that's going to change. And I really do wish I had more of Jax's POV because I do not care about Apollo and I don't want to hear his POV and it just keeps coming up and it's annoying me. I don't hate it, but I'm not obsessed with it like I was the first two books. And I know a lot of people have been saying this, so I've been trying to lower my expectations, but it still sucks when it's, you know not what you thought it would be. I'm going to continue reading this. Hopefully we finish this today so we can start Iron Flame tomorrow and we're doing now a anticipated new releases reading vlog. Um, so excited. And Mitch Album's book comes out in two days. I don't know if I'll be able to include it in this vlog because I don't know how long it's going to take me to finish Iron Flame. But we'll see. And I am busier towards the end of the week. so. Fingers crossed I'm able to figure out my time well so that we can include all of this in one vlog, but so exciting. I need to give you all <laughs> I need to give you all an update before I finish this book. Okay, because I'm flabbergasted right now. I have sorry for the lighting, it's already getting so dark. Daylight savings time. I'm on page 330, chapter 40. I've got beef with this book. <laughs> now I know a lot of people online said it wasn't the best, but I had a vision in my head of how this book was gonna go, and it is exactly the opposite than I thought. And I don't know how to feel about it because <laughs> if these are the answers to all the mysteries about Jax, Evangeline, all the different curses that have happened, all the different secrets in the past two, almost three books, if these are the answers that are slowly coming out to these questions, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> And I'm so, so sad about it, but like, I'm just so pissed. I am genuinely really upset. So I wanted to say this before I finish the book because my thoughts might change, but you know, for the past like 100 pages, I've just been upset. <laughs> and yes, the parts about Jax when he's in the picture, adore, love it. Everything else, give me a break. But yes, I think I will definitely finish tonight. I have about almost 70-ish pages left. And then we will start Iron Flame probably. <sighs> wow. I will come back once I have some thoughts. Even though I'm going to finish tonight, I don't know if I'm going to talk about how I'm feeling until tomorrow. Just because I like to let things simmer and brew and just 
wait out the initial feelings. As you can see, my reactions are very strong, but they do tend to change as I reflect more about the book that I'm reading. So we're going to let me do that so I can actually collect my thoughts and provide a rating. But right now, like honestly, like not a five star, which is really upsetting. I gave both books one and two, both five stars, like six star category. I, I just don't think this is going to be five star. I'm so sad. Okay, I'm going to continue reading. This is not dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. It's just like, what the f***? <laughs> oh my god. It's been a few days. I wanted to check in. I just recorded my end of your book tag video, which I think you will see before this video. But I wanted to check in for a reading update for Iron Flame. I haven't talked to you all in a few days since I've started this book. And I'm officially at the halfway point. So. Let's talk non-spoiler thoughts. This book is a lot more kind of hectic than the last book, but it's also not. I find there's a lot going on and there's a lot of like secrets being unraveled and there's definitely a lot more romance between Violet and Zayden. But the in Fourth Wing, the last section of the book was so jam-packed with just like action after action where it felt like you were getting slapped across the face like chapter after chapter and here it's a lot of things that are happening but nothing that is so extreme yet but it's also just halfway through the book and I really don't know like what else can happen in the last half I don't want to say any spoilers or anything like that but I absolutely hate Barish more than I have hated any other character in this book, even Dane. Evil, pure evil. <laughs> I am enjoying it. It's definitely a lot more easier to read and follow, but I have a little thing to say about this book. Like, let me go to one of the first pages so you can... Can you see this font? why is the font so small like am i reading war and peace this is tiny 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 font and the last book fourth wing the font was normal so i don't enjoy that uh, i hate small font i don't love like super large font but like something where it's like i'm not squinting my eyes when i look at it and i don't even have glasses but i still feel my eyes straining when i read this book um i have heard a lot of not so great things about people's copies of this book. I would say for now my copy seems perfectly fine. Um, I mean like my sprayed edges were a little like I have this like white part but I could like fill that in with marker and I've seen a lot of people say they pre-ordered with the book but then it's coming like two weeks after the release date, which is also crazy because if you pre-order it, they should have had it printed in time for your pre-order. So yeah, not great, but thankfully my experience has been good, but I have heard many, many people's complaints online. Those are my thoughts so far about Iron Flame. I am enjoying it and I am excited to see where this goes. Both my friends that I was reading this book with finished it already and they both gave it five stars and won't talk to me about anything because they're like, can't say anything, don't want to spoil anything. So I have a feeling some crazy shit is going to happen, <laughs> but we're just going to have to continue reading and see. Baby, I have to read right now. Five pages left.
What the fuck? All right, my friends, it has, I believe it's been a week since I finished both A Curse for True Love and Iron Flame, and I thought we can wrap up my thoughts. I will probably go into some spoilers or things that may be considered as spoilers talking about these two books. So if you have not read them, be forewarned that maybe don't listen to this part. <laughs> because I don't want to ruin anything for you all if you have not read these books. Um, spoiler free, I gave both of these books four stars and they were both just good for me. Okay, so now we'll go into each book and I will talk about some details that may be considered spoilers. So again, warning, if you haven't read any of these books, maybe don't um, listen to the rest of this video. So first, let's talk about A Curse for True Love. Again, this is the third and final book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, which is kind of like a continuation slash related to the Caraval series. And this one actually ends up having more than one perspective. Typically, it was just Evangeline's perspective. And then book three, you get Evangeline's perspective, Apollo and Jax's perspective. So before this came out, I was so excited. I thought this was going to be my favorite book in the series because book two was just so fantastic, so much better than book one. And there was just so much action. There was just so much connection between Evangeline and Jax. And then the huge cliffhanger at the end where Apollo basically got rid of all of Evangeline's memories. It was crazy. So I was so excited for this book. I felt like we were finally going to get to a point where we will actually see a relationship form between Evangeline and Jax. And even though there was the huge cliffhanger at the end of book two, I felt like, you know, there is always a way out of all of these spells and things that go on in this world. So I wasn't really worried that that was not going to be reversible. But when we got into this book and Apollo's POV came into view I was just like this is not what I'm here for <laughs> and I felt like it dragged a lot in the beginning I was quite bored I was really upset honestly and then once we got Jack's POV it started kicking up and you know you got to see a little bit more of Jax and Evangeline and like that chemistry that we wanted throughout this whole series but it still felt like something was missing. I just feel like um, it was a very unfulfilling ending to this series. I also noticed there was like characters missing, like where was Luke, where was um, Evangeline's sister, like where did all these people go? It was just so center focused between these three. And I don't know, I just, again, it just felt like something was missing. And then the ending, it just felt a little lackluster for me. Yeah, they kind of get a happy ending, but at the same time, I just felt like I needed more and I really did not like the epilogue. Now I know that the epilogue is different in I think three different copies, like there's three different variations of the epilogue. Um, so I don't know if they are better, but I don't know, just overall, I felt very unfulfilled and, and sad that this was the ending, even though yeah, it was kind of like a happy ending. It was a little bit open-ended and just not as satisfying as I thought it would be. I'm really sad to see that this series is over. I do still think this is a five-star series. Book one and two are like six-star category for me. This is just a four-star, so even and out, still five-star series. Um, it will have such a deep, and dedicated place in my heart for it. Um, just a little bit disappointed, but I still nonetheless really 
enjoyed my time overall. Still love Jax with every fiber of my being. Mixed emotions, but I would still definitely recommend it, especially if you've read books one and two. You just gotta read it. All right, now moving on to Miss Iron Flame. This was a beast of a book to get through. And again, I was quite dissatisfied. So Fourth Wing, I still had issues with Fourth Wing. The writing was a bit juvenile. Um, some of the dialogue was a little awkward. Violet's was a little awkward. There were so many like one-liners that were just so weird to me. Um, but like Zayden really made me going with that book. And even though the beginning of Fourth Wing was a little boring, like the last hundred pages made up for it. And that cliffhanger was a fantastic cliffhanger. And so going into this book, I, I didn't know what to expect. Honestly, I didn't know where this revolution was going. I didn't know what was going to happen. And I don't know if I'm like happy with what happened or not. Like there was a lot of action in this book. But it wasn't as crazy as I thought it would be. It felt like it was dragging out a lot, especially like the first half of the book. And it did really feel like I was reading two different books in this book. It's massive and part one and part two feels like it was two separate books basically. The language is still not my favorite. It still feels very juvenile and even though we saw more romance between Zayden and Violet, I, I don't know, I still didn't enjoy it. Like, I felt like there was so much unneeded miscommunication and distrust in that relationship, and it dragged throughout the entire book. Like, it could have been, like, you know, the beginning half where, you know, they were still trying to figure out Violet not being able to trust Zayden and Zayden, like, not being able to trust Violet and their secrets because of Dane but then Dane had a redemption arc so but it's still like carried on and I still love Zayden though he is definitely one of my favorite characters um Violet is a little bit annoying <laughs> I really like that this book did explore the found family trope I think their found family and their friend group is really amazing and I was really nervous that another one of them was going to die in this book but thank god Rebecca didn't do that to us again. I'm sure it will happen in future books, but at least in this book, none of the core friend group died. My favorite part most definitely has to be the dragons. They are just the best, and I love their dialogue, and I love um, Andarna, and I'm sorry if I am not pronouncing their names in the correct Gaelic uh, pronunciation. It's hard. I was also listening to the audiobook for this book and they definitely pronounce it incorrectly as well. So it's like really embedded in my head, the wrong pronunciation. But yeah, and Darna's sassiness was fantastic in this book. It was so funny. Um, and then the ending, again, a cliffhanger wasn't as impactful as book one. Um, but I am intrigued to see where this story goes. It kind of feels like a lot of mishmash happened in this book. Um, but yeah, I still give it four stars. It was like the second half was a lot better than the first half. It's still a lot of action, um, a lot of different themes that were explored. But again, the problem that I do have with this book is similar to Fourth Wing, where it's just the language is not my favorite. The writing is not my favorite, but the story itself is fascinating to me. And I love the dragons and I love Zayden. So yeah. Overall, a little bit of a lackluster turn of events. I still had fun reading these two books, and I do think I will continue the Fourth Wing series, but we'll see whenever book three comes out. Um, let me know if you've read both of these books, what your thoughts are about both of them. Were they disappointing to you as well, or did you enjoy them and like give them five-star rating? Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for spending what was about two, two and a half weeks with me reading these two books. I hope you all had a fantastic reading week and I will see you all in my next video. Happy reading. Lazy Bye. Sunday mornings hiding under covers. I don't mind staying in with you. Play a 
favorite movie Laying right beside me I don't mind when it's just us two